Happy New Year! <laughs> it's time to say goodbye to 2022 and hello to 2023. And what better way to do that than with my annual episode where I review all the things that I've created and made over the past calendar year. Uh, so this will be a look back episode for the first section, reviewing those things, and a look ahead episode where I talk about things that I'm planning for 2023 for the channel, my crafting, etc. So I like to keep track, yes, <laughs> of the things that I make and create. And one of the places I track those items is in Ravelry. So Ravelry.com is a great resource for keeping track of your knitting, crocheting, weaving, spinning, yarn stash projects, right? Uh, it's a free resource to use. It's also a place to find patterns. Uh, some of them posted for free, some of them you can pay for. There are also forums to join in community, and so it's just a nice resource for those things. Caveat, I do want to put in a disclaimer here that Ravelry put out an update in the last, what, two years was it? And they redid their website design, and it is not fully accessible to those with uh, visual triggers. Um, so it may not be a website that you personally can utilize, uh, but it is one that I use. And so I just thought I would share that information with you. The second resource that I use to track my progress, projects and progress in those projects, uh, is just a simple uh, cloud document in my Google account. So I have noticed that Ravelry's algorithms for counting up yardages and things are oftentimes incorrect, and that really bothers me. So I keep track of these things on my own. So I have printed out my spreadsheet, and I'm going to be sharing some of those numbers with you today, along with pictures of all of the projects, uh, things that I've created over the course of 2022. Just to clarify, things that count for 2022 are things that I finished in 2022. So these could be projects that were started in previous years, but if they were finished somewhere between January 1st and December 31st in the year of 2022, then it counts for 2022. In 2022, I finished... 25 projects. Yeah. <laughs> 25 projects. That's pretty awesome. Um, of those 25 projects, all 25 were knitting. Yeah, I know, right? There was no crochet, no weaving. It was all knitting, which is cool, but also a little sad because... I like those other crafts as well. Um, with those 25 knitting projects, the total yardage out of the stash was 12,977 yards. Both of those numbers are down from the previous year. So in 2021, I finished 31 projects. And that was 13,165 yards. So as far as yardage goes, I'm like pretty much on par with the previous year, which is pretty cool. <laughs> of those 25 projects, I'm going to talk about the types of objects I created. And we'll start with the most common one and work our way down. So I finished nine pairs of socks. Yes, <laughs> a beautiful 
three by three grid of socks, <laughs> nine pairs of socks. So we've got a hand spun pair of socks for my husband. We've got a hand spun pair for myself out of some Romney mohair. We've got, um, let's see, a bunch of Patton's Croy self-striping socks um, for my husband, for my dad, for myself. Um, one that's going to be a gift this upcoming year in 2023. Um, yeah, so pretty happy about finishing nine pairs of socks. I also knit six hats. Yeah, six. That's actually pretty good. So the first one was the brioche starter hat, uh, which I absolutely love. The next three hats were me just playing around with scrap yarn and um, a stitch pattern that I was working on for a baby blanket. So I've got three of those hats. Uh, then I knit a barley hat, which is by Tin Can Knits, and if I remember correctly, is a free pattern. Um, and then I knit a hat for mom for Christmas. So yeah, six hats, not too bad. I finished four garments, or tops, garments, yeah, like sweaters, vests, cardigans, uh, I finished four of those this year. Uh, the first one was the Mellow Cardigan, which was quite a slog, but I got through. Uh, then I made the Forest Green Timbo Vest. I should say it's just called Timbo Vest, but I named it Forest Green. Uh, I also finished a Colorwork sweater, so Dark Water, and a Tunic sweater, which will get frogged this coming year, but I did knit it, I did finish it, and that thing was 1,400 yards of knitting, so I am counting it because I did it. On top of that, I made one shawl. Yep, just the one. That's okay. <laughs> uh, I also knit two stuffies, so something that's stuffed with stuffing. Uh, the two stuffies I made this year were both gnomes. Uh, one was a Christmas gift to my sister, and one was for myself, knitting along with the mystery knit along for Advent. Um, I also made uh, two blankets. Don't get excited. They're just baby blankets. <laughs> uh, so I knit two countryside baby blankets while I was writing that pattern and recording videos, uh, video tutorials for it. Um, so I made two of those. And to wrap up my 24 projects, I made one thing for the home, and that would be my Buffalo Check coasters. And I made six, six coasters. Uh, again, I wrote the pattern, I created video tutorials, you can find those here on the channel, um, and so I did make one thing for the home. To talk about yardage in, so very specifically the craft of spinning, I finished six spinning projects this year, uh, which is up from last year where I had five projects, so yay. Um, out of those six projects, though, I only wrote down the yardage for five of them. So I do have a spinning project here that I just left blank. I have no idea what the yardage is. Um, that yarn is already caked up into a ball and like partially knit into a project. And I do not feel like ripping it out to count the yardage. So I'm just not going to include that in these numbers. Uh, so, the spinning projects I finished this year included some green merino, uh, some, oh, I can't remember the fiber content, uh, but the colorway is Moonwalk. I purchased this from Wound Up Fiber Arts. Um, I've got some Romney mohair, 
which I spun um, into a three ply for socks. The project I didn't track yardage for was the two ply version of that same fiber. Uh, I also spun up some cotton, which I also made a video about here on the channel, going from plant to yarn, if you're interested. And I did a really big spin as a review of Wild Wool Farm uh, fibers. So uh, yeah, six big projects finished. Out of those five that I actually kept count of, uh, that brought in 1,800 yards into the stash. Um, so not bad, not bad. So now that 2022 is wrapped up and we're moving on to a new calendar year, of course, I have some New Year's goals. <laughs> I'm not going to call them resolutions. They are just goals. Uh, really, it's just a way for me to write down and document kind of what I'm thinking in this transition period of going from one year to the next. So one thing I'm thinking about for the channel here is... Now that I've set the baseline for these monthly videos, number one, I want to keep that going. So wrapping up the end of each month, having a quick little review of what's off the needles, what's on the needles, new things, adventures, etc. I want to keep that going. Uh, the second thing is I want to do more feature videos. So this is going to be following a project from start to finish where I share how I'm setting it up, how the project is going, the final results, would I do anything differently, right? Uh, so it kind of takes you along with me on the journey of crafting that item, whether it be knitting, crocheting, spinning, weaving, whatever. I think it's nice to have some feature videos where we just focus on one project. As the D Hard House Designs designer, <laughs> I'm also realizing that some of my patterns need an update. So looking back over some of my patterns with the comments and questions I've received, I'm realizing those things could use another pass over and to get some consistency across the um, formatting and th the editing, but really the formatting of my patterns they're a bit more consistent so one of the things I'm going to be doing in 2023 is going back through and updating the patterns some of them not all of them <laughs> uh, but some of the patterns on Ravelry I do want to give you a heads up and I'm gonna keep reminding you about this as well but I want to give you a heads up that you know with inflation with increases in fees to list things on sites like Ravelry. Um, when folks purchase a pattern from me, I get very little of that money, which I'm generally fine with. It's why my pattern prices are pretty low is because that is not my main time job, right? <laughs> Uh, I do not rely on that income to feed myself and my family. However, when websites like Ravelry are taking 95% of the money and I only get 5%, that is something I should investigate and question. So uh, other folks have done this and I'm going to do this as well and that's when I go back through and update a pattern and post the new freshly revised pattern, uh, that pattern price is going to increase just because that's what prices do over time. Like I said, with inflation and everything else, um, the materials cost more money, etc. Um, so those pattern prices are going to increase, but I'm not going to increase all of them all at once across the board without telling you. <laughs> so, um, you will see those changes happening as I update the patterns. So if you're interested, you can purchase the patterns now. You'll get the old copy of the pattern 
you'll get it at the current price that's listed. And then when it gets updated, you will get a new version of the pattern at no extra cost. So if you have already purchased a pattern of mine and you're wondering, am I going to have to pay more money now to continue to access that pattern? The answer is no. If you've already purchased it, any updates you get will come for free. Um, so yeah, as I'm reworking these patterns and, and rewriting them and updating the formatting and adding more clarifications and instructions or whatever might be going on that the pattern needs tweaking on, um, I will be talking about it here on the channel. So stay tuned for updates about which pattern update is coming next, what I'm working on, what you can expect to see, uh, as well as new patterns that are going to get posted on Ravelry. So stay tuned for all of those fun new things. I think that wraps it up. I want to keep this somewhat short and sweet so you can get back to celebrating your new year. Maybe sleeping in a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> uh, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Bye!